podcast my name is jeff i might be doing homework this episode and i'm very quiet but it's okay we have special individuals joining the show and hello hi what Back. oh again yeah hooray uh, we, al- we also have uh, josh who just said hooray hooray huzzah and we also have alan here hooray How's everyone doing? I'm dead inside. Hooray! <laughs> I am slowly dying inside. How about that? Uh, Do you have like cancer or something? No, not actually. I just mean I I don't <clears throat> I don't do anything in between jobs. Still, I have. I don't to- go to school. <laughs> I don't do anything. Fuck, man, that sucks. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like, I want to go to school, but then I'm like, every time I look at it, I'm just like, that's a lot of letters. <laughs> that's the best way I can explain it. Because, like, I want to get into IT, right? Right. Uh, but I want to get into, like, a specific, like, subsect. And every time I start, like, looking at that stuff, it is just, there is so many, like, different certifications, different classes. And one of the schools here, uh, because I live in New Jersey, the the closest, like, good university, and I'm using air quotes, is Rowan. Oh, God. And so because I have to go to Rowan, they're becoming really big. So they overload all of their courses to the max to the point to where you can go to a computer science degree and then one of the like recommended classes that you want for credits is like a uh, a philosophy class and it's just like why? why and it's because they want you to stay there longer so you spend more money and so that you look fancier because you're like i took like all these extra classes and it's like it doesn't mean anything could you skate away with that with taking, um, I don't know, taking some of those classes before, or could you somehow chop half of those off? Um, I didn't look into it too much. I'm thinking I just have to look at a different school. Yeah, I might have to just go. Over, I might just have to go over to Philadelphia and go to one of those ones, uh, or maybe find an online tech school instead. Because uh, for me, uh, when I was kind of tiptoeing back and forth between uh, college and uh, going to work. Uh, the best choice I ever did was, oh, I like this course. Seems like this is a course for me. I'm going to do these courses one at a time for a bit and then go take it full time when it comes. And freaking that's the best decision ever because I see all my other classmates around me freaking out of like they don't have time to do anything. And I'm like, I have six hours to do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> Josh, did you do any work this week on the game? Ah. Uh, Fuck no. <laughs> well, at least you know. Because another well, freaking family is over this weekend too, so that kind of compiled complications. And also, I'm slowly trying to figure out programs. Because I'm like, I should upgrade these things. Because I should, I should upgrade. And now I'm like, oh fuck, I have to relearn. What, what programs are you upgrading? Uh, Ma- uh, Maya, and also I finally figured out I have stupid uh, Quixel. Oh, you do have Quixel, and you finally figured it out. Yeah, Maya, you should just get my LT, you know? Uh, nope, I have one pre-installed, and I'm using that. 
At least you're not being as stubborn as uh, Yendary Dev with upgrading. What was, happened? What? What? I was gonna say, what sort of tools is he using? He, I forget what he was doing, but he was using something out there. He was using Unity, I think, at first, and he wanted to upgrade to something else. But it required like a large rewrite, and that's when he got into the bed with Tiny Build, and they like rewrote the code and upgraded it so that way like he could code faster. Mm. But he was super stubborn about like not doing it because just because of like I code my way and my way is the highway, and it's like, but it's easier if you just switch instead of doing convoluted dumb bullshit. And like people like literally expose this from his live streams. The fact that it's like, you're just doing it wrong and making it harder. Just do it right. <laughs> just do it the right way. But that's yeah. the thing with coding. Stop is, that. That's the thing with Stop coding it. is get some help. But that's the thing with coding is like, it's, no matter what happens and stuff like that, you're always doing it the wrong way. You're always doing it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I just I started to, to like I I liked where he I liked his game, to be honest. And I was like, okay, this could be interesting. And I followed it for a little bit, and then all of a sudden, all these videos cropped up of like of like scummy shit he was doing. And I started watching them, and I'm just like, you know what? This is just drama that I don't want to deal with. So now I just I just dropped it. I don't even look at it anymore. Pretty much. I mean, I do, I do like watch one of his update videos whenever they happen. And they're kind of entertaining to watch. But at the, I, same, I just, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I'll just wait until the game comes out, and hopefully that's okay. I don't know. I constantly, like, when... Uh, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Conflicted? When you only see something from one side, and then all of a sudden somebody's like, hey, maybe you should like look at this, and you get new information, you're like, man, my vision of this person has changed. My vision of this person has changed drastically. Well, it's my, it's kind of like the same often. vision I have with the Beck, the musician. Like he, I think his music is, I yeah, I think his music is fantastic, until you start going down the rabbit hole of like, oh, who is this person and what does he do and what does he do for creativity or something, and you just start going to the rabbit hole of his life and you're like, he's a Scientologist. I mean, that shouldn't add any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this shouldn't add anything or subtract anything to his music. But at the same time, I'm like. Fuck off! No, you're you're like a good musician. I like your music. Don't be a Scientologist. Like fuck. Yeah, yeah. That's <sighs> that's the kind of the problem I'm getting into because like he, you know, overly moderates his the Reddit and like just deletes oh, dude. anything yeah. against them. And it's just like these people. I'm like, I get it because you don't want to deal with it, but at the same time, it's like there's other things that he's done that other people have talked about and then he bans them for it and it's like I need to keep the person and what they're doing completely separate I've kind of like trying to do that with like everything I do now mm. just like whatever you make that's fine but if you really if you really cock it up then I'm not going to support you support your, your object anymore that's pretty much how I am you're like me and EA where like I refuse to support EA in any major capacity by the way, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to buy me Anthem, I'll gladly accept it for free. <laughs> yeah. I am still super on the fence about it. I'm probably not going to buy it day one. I'm going to wait, and I'm going to give it like a, what? like a week. What? what? Anthem. Anthem. Uh, okay. Um, so I was at Comic Expo, and I saw actual like like cardboard like ar suits of armor, like combat mech suits of armor for you know, this game. For the video card hell. robot game? And what? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? I saw I was just like, I, and it came out of nowhere. I just like, I walked in, I saw that. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I never paid attention to it. I walked past him. I'm like, that's actually like really cool. That's clever marketing. Still doesn't tell me anything about the goddamn game. But cool marketing. And I just kept walking. This is yeah. my yeah, thing. There's no. no gameplay yet. Still. Oh, no, there's gameplay out there. Well, yeah, but it's, just, it's like scripted, like smoke and mirrors. Yeah, it's all scripted hard horseshit and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about like, give me some beta play. Yeah, give or me alpha a, play even. Give me, 
Here, here's what I want. Here's the thing about Anthem that really upsets me as like a Bioware, former Bioware fan. I should say that, clarify that, mm. because let me be honest here. I was considering about picking up Andromeda and then for 10 bucks and then uh, installing it on Origin and then breaking the disc in two just for views. <laughs> but, um, like, this is just my opinion and stuff like that, but I don't think that Anthem's very interesting as a game. From I think that I don't I don't disagree with you. And I think you that, see, Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you can go, you can go ahead. Okay. But like I like I want to support e Bioware because I think that they're very important to Edmonton as a company and stuff like that. And the, the other option is support Beamdog and I I really don't like some of the things Beamdog does just as a company. Like I think that they're very sort of like, well we ship good games, but your games are bad. Well we ship good games and you're just a hater. It's like, oh, okay. Thanks Beamdog. I appreciate you. Um who's Beamdog? Baldur's Gates remastered. Oh. Literally the literally the CEO sat there and was like, "Yeah, we literally just backed up a truck of uh, Baldur's Gate and that's how we made most of our money." And it's like, "Okay, cool. Make an actual new IP, please." Please. That's <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. and and it's nothing against anyone who works there and stuff like that. It's just like I don't really care about Baldur's Gate, so thus I really don't think that them as the next generation of like biowares of Edmonton, although no, they are. Uh, my, my, my really funny thing about the Baldur's Gate thing is the fact that this isn't this, this is, I think what the third release of Baldur's Gate at this point. Yeah. And that's the thing that kind of like puts me away from it. I'm just like, mm, mm. well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's nice and all. Are we ever going to get anything, you know, Different. different or new question mark yeah why don't they just make a new Baldur's Gate I yeah, mean, make a new Baldur's Gate Trent make a new Baldur's Gate thank you very much I will fucking I will fucking give you 10 bucks I know there's a like Baldur's Gate. there's a whole like there's even like a whole like tabletop RPG set for Baldur's Gate there is lore and stuff just 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 Put out a story. Like, hell, you could, like, use one of your remastered engines and just give us a new story. Like, yeah. I, th I think they've been trying to do that, but everyone immediately forgot about it because of how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, this is trash. Yeah, that's that's the problem. You can make a game look, look as good as you want and play as good as you want. Oh, Destiny. But if your story sucks... Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, no. Destiny's fault wasn't the story sucked. It was the fact that the story you had to go fucking on t online to find the fucking story. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, even even in... I, I, all right. I hate myself for this because I looked at Destiny. I remember when Destiny 1 came out. I think I played it for maybe two hours and I got to like level five and I was like, I've been playing this game for like two and a half hours or whatever. And I was just like, I'm, it feels like crap. And I'm like, I don't have any idea what the fuck's going on. And I was just like, this game sucks. It's basically want to be, uh, what is it? Borderlands? Yeah, yeah. It's Borderlands that isn't funny. <laughs> and I was like, this is dumb. So I completely ignored it. And then Destiny 2 comes out. My friends are like, buy Destiny 2, buy Destiny 2. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I've already had my bad experience. I tried it again. I was like, okay, this actually feels pretty good on PC. I was like, but I know exactly how it goes. PC games get delayed three months. And nobody buys it on PC because everybody bought it on PS4. Yada, yada, yada. So I didn't buy it again. And then my, f my brother convinces me to buy a PS4. And I Rainbow Six Siege on that. <laughs> and I have PS Plus, and then all of a sudden it comes around. Play Destiny for free, and all my and all my PlayStation friends are like, "We're playing Destiny now." And I'm like, "Here we go oh. again." <laughs> I'm getting into this bullshit again. And so we start playing on the the new two point whatever patch, right, where they did the gun changes. Yeah. And it was fun. Yep. And I hate myself, and I bought Forsaken, and I've been playing it a lot. Oh, I can believe that. Ben, That's the thing. From, ben, for, for I, me, for, oh, I, my buddy got me into Destiny when like that big, like huge expansion. Just like back, just before like they made the jump to Destiny Two. I think it's uh, Court of the Wolf King. 
Taken the Taken King. King? Yeah. No, it's not Taken King. It's the it's the Wolf something. Oh, it's the last expansion. Uh, one of, after that. Liars of yeah. Iron. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, I think it's that one. And he tried to get me into that, and this is Vecven, who, who we're talking about, a, a friend of ours. And we're we, we're playing it, and I just like like I stopped mid mission, and I looked, and I straight up like I'm playing Destiny with him online on the Xbox One, and I just like I can't keep playing this. And he's like, "Why? It's you're having fun, aren't you?" He's like, "Yes, with you." And he's like, "Oh, I'm like I'm not enjoying this game. I've been bashing it for the last hour since we've started uh, since we've played." He's like, okay, that's fair. So I just put it down. I, I've heard things about the new like campaign story and like, damn, they, dude. Like, I'm gonna say spoiler warning, but it doesn't matter because they advertised with it. They killed the only character everybody liked. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, and my response to that is like, I didn't like that character. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 90% of the fan base of Destiny <laughs> liked Cade 6. And then they just killed him underground in the dark by the dumbest protagonist. You Okay, and now super spoiler warning. You want to fucking know the fantastic point about the end of that fucking story? What? He's not even the main antagonist. You just, at the end of the story, you and another NPC just put two bullets in his head and then move on to the more pressing matter. I can believe that. Actually, what makes it even funnier is the fact that like I saw the trailer for that that game, that that new expansion and stuff like that. And like where he's like any last words, he's like what that was is your, your sister? sister? <laughs> I was like <laughs> that I I give like I don't like this character cuz he talks way too much sass and that's the reason why I don't like him. Is he's just That's nothing but sass. And, but I, uh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. That's the robot guy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, it's Nathan Philman or whatever yeah. his last name is. But the thing but that was the thing, is like it's it's not that it's like that's a bad character. It's just like I I don't like constant sass from characters. I like characters who sass with like their sass comes in a way that you don't expect it. It's just like what do you, what do you what do you expect our commander to do? Like it's like well it, it's either this or this, but but that's the same thing. That's the point. I fucking hate him. That what do you expect from me? <laughs> I expect you to be an awesome human being, Alan. Gosh. No. Yeah, there was. It, I admit, K six was never serious. He never yeah. had a serious mode, which kind of like one hundred percent sass with zero serious is like. It's too one dimensional, but all the characters are one dimensional in that game. It's like the whole story part of that game is just really lame and really, flat. really flat. Yeah, I can believe that. I can agree with that. And I can believe that. That's the reason but, why I was like with with the game. I was just like if if you had made Caden six like where like his sass and then when you his like. Sure, he's constantly sassy until he gets serious, where it's just like it just suddenly stops. You're like, okay, I should I should probably be paying attention now. Yeah, because even in the like the opening mission, he like he just like he makes a joke and then he jumps off the edge, and then the whole time he's just making joke, making jokes, and then he jumps on one of like the flying like uh, fallen robots and like rides that around and like. He just slaps a bunch of fucking red buttons in the control room. He never has a moment where he's serious at, at yeah. all, ever. Even when he died, he wasn't serious. Except, except that, but that works for him though. That that death worked for him though. Yeah, the death works for him. And, and it, but anyway, as I was gonna say, the story is it's yeah. better than what it was before because then you had to play through the entire first story and the DLCs. Oh, the DLCs were terrible. I hear the they gameplay from really was great. Bad. Yeah, the gameplay is great. The game modes are great. PvP, it's a little rough because they're still like transitioning with the weapon system. So there's not really like any kind of checks and balances for some of the more overpowered weapons. And that's, that's the fair. new game mode is absolutely fan fucking tastic. And there's only one problem with it, and it's Sleeper Simulant. <laughs> yeah, that's like the major problems and stuff like that. It's. Destiny Forsaken right now is like in a really weird place. 
in my heart. And it's just because it's probably been balanced for after the season pass drops. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's months from now when we'll have answers to what's been broken. And then after they've seen what's too strong now. Yeah. But it's just uh, some things are just frustrating. But playing it mostly is fine. It's entertaining. It's it's a game and that I could dump a night into it. Yeah, it's the thing with Destiny is like it's a game that like I can play definitely, and I don't oh, yeah. hate myself. It's not that, like League of Legends where eventually I end up loathing myself and humanity. I, I uninstalled League of Legends finally. Oh, funny, you funny. can play one game of League and want to strangle your firstborn. Yes. <laughs> Funny yes. thing uh, is, I've been playing with uh, Mewtwo, and I actually have good time. And I'm so, I'm not mad. I'm just always confused of like, oh, why did we lose that time? And then Mewtwo goes, oh, because blankety blank did this blankety blank, and then because this blanket blank that caused blanket blank. And I'm like, oh, thanks for the explanation, because all the entire time I was just concentrating on our lane, and then we lost. It's like, well, it wasn't our fault. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I mean, you're also like immune to anger and rage. You only have like two settings in your brain. And this is very cruel of me to sit there and say, it's like, you only have happy, sad. I've never really seen you angry. There's, I could get angry, but it has to be very specific angry. Yeah. Uh, what, what did it, what, what happened one time was the fact that you were like, just mad about magic one day and you went on like a solid like five minute rant about magic one time you were that like was... i was like yo josh chill bro see like that's the Boy. thing it's like it, my mad is very specific it could be like oh man the entire world blew up i'm like whatever but then it's like someone's eating their soup with a spoon like a caveman fucking god damn it why are you holding it like that don't hold it like that! You look like a freaking imbecile! Why do you hold it like a freaking cutlery like that? Fucking hold it correctly! Stop, stop. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> We've already, got, oh, uh, we've already got enough. We've already got enough. Like uh, we've already got enough salt to let flow today. Because of <laughs> fucking bullshit and roll twenty politics happening in the states. Everything's uh, going to shit. It's fantastic. Can we do the can we do the politics in the states first, just really quickly? Oh, no. quickly. Okay. Oh, Did quickly. I miss something? The, uh, the Kalrava, whatever his name is. Kavanaugh. Yeah, Kavanaugh. Oh, uh, um, the last thing I heard was. Um, he's, he's been confirmed. Ex, yeah, I heard that he was confirmed, and then the ex boyfriend of the the woman yep. came forward and made a sworn statement that she lied in her sworn statement. Yep. And, uh, and then CNN doxed him, and apparently yes. he's been getting like death threats and stuff like that, and like. Holy shit, the shit show that is this. Okay, I'm going to really quickly talk about this bullshit. Uh, one, what the fuck, due process. Two, what the fuck, statute of limitations down in the States. I know that's a thing down there. Why isn't that a thing down there? What the fuck? Uh, uh, has- it depends on the state. In my state, in New Jersey, there is no statute of limitations on rape cases. Uh, I don't think the state that – like that's the reason why I went to a uh, – it didn't go to a court of law. It went to a judicial court. Which is different, apparently, down in the states, and I don't get that because up here in Canada, judicial law and court of law are kind of the same thing. It's We're, super confusing the state and federal level. Pretty much, like you have to think of it as like states are almost separate from the federal, but when there's something a state can't handle, it goes up to a federal. Yeah, and that's what happened. That's what happened with with uh, Brett. Is it got kicked yeah. up apparently, uh, but so, the thing is, and the thing, but the thing is, is like that what, again. What, what makes me like the thing that she just like immediately had this Kate, uh, course Kate, uh, court case laughed out of the room was the fact that okay, where's the evidence? Why wasn't there a police report filed? Why wasn't where's this? Where's this? And the moment if they couldn't provide any answers, it's like okay, we don't need a judge. Uh, uh, as a judge, I don't see any point in me continuing this court case. You are innocent, Mister Brett. Kavanaugh, uh, I, I can't the say damage. his last name, but the, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the damage is done now. But like, man, they tried to. That was a fucking smear campaign and a witch hunt in a, in a half. And, well, oh, I don't want to comment. Of, Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say a lot of speculation was is that they just they honestly only did it to delay the vote. Yeah, 
but it so they fucking, could find something. It but backfired. It, oh, it backfired. It, the thing is, is like the Republicans weren't like really united. It, like, like from what I've been hearing from like my other st- uh, states' friends who are like t- they're, they're really into the politics and stuff like that, they're like, well, no, like before this happened, like the republics, the Republicans were really like divided and like like even with Trump in power, they were kind of like, well, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. This happened, and like the like a fucking wall formed around the Republicans. They're like, no, you're no, it's over. We're we're done with this bullshit. Because well, like a, a lot of people are fucking mad that this happened. Well, and like this is a problem, and I don't really want to sit there and make a comment on this, but this is a problem that I think the states have been facing for a while. And this is something that I'm going to sit there and say a little bit about that is that like, how often do we hear online that all men are rapists? Uh, I hear. Oh, actually, I can't say I hear it often online because, uh, unfortunately, if I do, I'm being slightly biased to the fact that I actually follow a bunch of political stuff. So, like they re- they point out that stuff that doesn't happen. So, yeah. But um, I'm my, I'm a I'm a bit of a biased source. But like the major my point about that is stuff like that is that like this is it's very easy to throw. F e m i n i s t. By the way, that's how you spell it, Ben. Yeah, it's very easy in order to throw somebody off a cliff and stuff like that. And we just saw that go to the federal level. My question wouldn't be my question wouldn't be why. My question would mainly be, okay, so what are we going to do about this in order to prevent it from happening again? Because actually follow the course of due process. Uh should. No, no. It sh- it needs to follow the co- uh, process of due pro- uh, due process because that's the reason why it got to the federal. So they skipped due process and didn't do it uh, and tried to like it, it was a smear campaign. We all know. Oh yeah. It. Oh yeah. Everyone does. It really looks like that. Um, but I'm not going to state my opinion on it. Yeah, I personally, know, I know. sorry. Because I don't want to sit there and say something that I later find out that it is completely false. This is not, this isn't okay, and you have a country that's ripping itself at the seams. And then you have people who are actively assisting in ripping itself at the seams. Uh, Which country is this? Uh, I'm talking about the United States. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, Ben, but like... No, you're completely right. You are absolutely right, and I, I... We are very divided and very... We're focusing on the very much on the wrong things, and it's a mix of uh, things are being revealed that most people didn't know. Like, there's only three companies that owns all the news stations in our country, so oh. they have a stranglehold on the general populace is what they see. Yep, and then the internet isn't. <laughs> isn't being utilized properly and then it's being it's being stifled again by our companies and it's just our companies want to hold keep the power that they've had for so long and it's finally starting to come out crumble. and it's so, starting to cr- and it's starting to crumble too because and, it's coming yeah, and, out and so they're trying to pit they're trying to deflect and then they're trying to pit us against each other. So we're looking at something else besides the fact that we're literally being controlled by our companies. Yeah. And it's, it, it sucks that that's where capitalism has led us and where our founding principles never wanted us to be. Mm. But yep. individual, I feel like as an individual person is not a whole lot I can do about it. No, oh, no. I mean, Go to court, vote, uh, vote in your elections and stuff like that. Every vote counts. Yeah, but, I vote as much as I can, and um, you know, I try to I try to keep up. But after a while, man, it's just when you when you go to the ballot and you look and you and you you see, you know, all you see is right and left, and then they're both terrible. <laughs> or oh, what man. is better, and it's on the side that's just not going to win. Or you find an independent finally that's like finally matches your and views. And you never you put your win. vote, and you feel like it's never going to win. And then, but then, what you don't know, I found this out recently in the last election. If one of the independent parties in our system gets a certain percentage of votes, they get free funding for the next election. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's... So there is more than enough potential for an independent party that is all of a sudden just blast forward in support. Yeah. We just have that's, to vote for it. That, that, that's the, actually the pretty funny thing with, like, with up here in Canada. I think we have what? Six. Uh, well, you actually have what? Five major political parties. We have the NDP, the Conservatives, the Liberals, um, the Green Party, and the Quebecois. Unfortunately, and, and thankfully, the Quebecois has recently been crushed by a recent election in Quebec, where like a huge left wing of uh, uh, swing to the right happened with the recent election of the new party in charge in the provincial area. <clears throat> Good thing the traitors need to be fucking thrown out of the country. Um, I mean, yes. That, that, I'm, that's not the wrong statement. This party that's going in is actually apparently like really pro Canada. I mean, I hear um, your green about your green party a lot. I don't hear much about the that other one you just said. It sounds the, really French. I don't know how to say uh, it. The Cube de Quoi, the the, uh, the the literal traitors. They the Bloc uh, Quebecois so, to explain to people who don't really understand the Bloc Quebecois wanted to separate Quebec out. They from still the rest want of to Canada. separate Quebec. Well, they do, um, and so they ran referendums and stuff like that. And so the and reason they lost? why, Quebec, oh yeah, they lost multiple, multiple times. times. Um, the last time was the funniest because basically what happened was the conser- I think it was either the conservative or liberal government. Might it have was been the under liberal. the conservatives and okay. no, it was conservatives. The last one was conservatives. That's okay. what happened. So what ended up happening was the conservative government just said, okay, fine, we'll let you do a referendum. And what they did was they just opened the floodgates. So you know the Syrian refugee crisis that fucking happened in Europe? Yeah. An adept case would be the Syrian refugee crisis, but more yeah. controlled. Because basically what ended up happening was the Conservative Party basically just sent all of the refugees over to Canada or to Quebec. So when the shooting happened in Quebec, a lot of the things that a lot of Canadians were seeing there saying was because you have a yep. bunch of Quebec nationalists who are really took that thing personally. And got really fucking mad that that was happening. And, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that the Muslims were, like, needed to be protected. But in Quebec, they need to be protected. Yeah. Because they're fucking insane. Oh, no, it 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 wasn't under conservatives. It was was under the liberals. Because the liberals, this shooting only happened, what, last year? Two years ago? Uh, The shooting happened under the liberals. I know that. I'm talking about the referendum. Yeah. But the thing is, is like uh, with the part with the the Quebecois, and this is actually something that I don't think, you know, Ben, up here in Canada, we have the speaker of the of the house, which she's the person who is the speaker of the house represents the Queen of England because we are part of the Commonwealth. Yeah, we're we're bloody loyalists. Fuck off. Um, (laughs) But the thing is, is every party, every member of every party. When they first get sworn in, they swear an oath to the queen and the co- and country, because that's what they that's what we do here. Except the Quebecois, because they're a bunch of fucking traitors, and they shouldn't be allowed. And none of their votes should count because that was a big rule in our in our House of Commons or our Parliament. Sorry, is that once is as our like uh, representatives and stuff like that, you swear an oath to the country and to the people and the crown to do good for uh, to do no to do, to not do evil in the name of the people the cuban quad don't do that so they're they, they're not doing their job so all right your votes just don't count huh yeah wow i that would be nice if it worked like that uh, I, over here yeah I, well that's the thing is i also think that people not showing up to uh showing up to court uh should be like no no if if they don't show up, their votes don't matter. It's who's present that matters. Nobody, you can't. And the rule should be you can't abstain if you're present. It, you yeah. you need to have a stance. You cannot it's, say um, you cannot say I don't want to vote for this. I abstain. No, you. you it's, it's interesting yeah. here in Canada because like right now we're in political turmoil in terms of like the conservative party the, being the, conser- the conservative it's party is awesome. Uh, it's, it sounds like we both have our own. Uh, Political was uh, well, uh, could... basically if Trudeau wins this election, I'm pretty sure Alberta might fucking consider seceding. Yeah, no, Ooh. it's a surprise because the thing is, is the Wild Rose Party was a party that is basically the Cuban uh, Bloc du Bacois for Alberta. But for Alberta, but for Alberta, <laughs> and the thing is, the reason why it got formed was the conserv- the previous Conservative Party fucked us a bit, 
It wasn't hard. Oh. It wasn't bad. It was just it fucked us. And the liberals got in. Yeah. And that was the big thing. And then the conservative party in Alberta split into the Wild Rose Party, which is the uh, uh, the national like or the provincial uh, plant of the ca- of Alberta, and so that the White Rose Party and the Wild Rose Party and conservatives. They're basically the same party, except the Wild Rose is like, no, it's Alberta first. Fuck the rest of the country, and if we do get a majority, we're voting it out. Uh, they recently remerged, kind of, sort of, and what? what, what, what uh, yeah. It, 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 politics in Canada as fucked as politics down south. The only difference is, is that uh, our for, prime minister. Uh, is, unfortunately, our prime minister is a social justice warrior cuck. Yeah, our prime minister was a former teacher, and that makes him a all drama. He's so a dreamy. drama teacher. Oh fuck, he's got a personality coat, and I fucking hate him. I just, <laughs> I just like how there's a calendar saying my. My gorgeous, uh, no, what was it my gorgeous I mean, Canadian prime minister? <laughs> the fact that you guys managed to get a leader that isn't lawyer, businessman is pretty. Actually, like, but here's, but here's the thing though with us, amazing. Uh, for the past, what is it, 120 years that we've had our own like uh, court system and stuff like that for our prime minister and stuff like that. All of them have been lawyers. We don't get businessmen in our in our parliament. Because weird. Well, the thing is, is like there's no money to be made there. Oh yeah. Like yeah, you can like yeah, I'll, I'll funny, I'll do some things for my business, but like the Canadian courts are like very stringent about anybody like gerrymandering in, in the Canadian court in the Canadian Parliament because they're like they do a lot of background checks and stuff like that. That's the reason why when that scandal broke out with uh, Stephen Harper's one guy. Why, like, the conservative party just fucking threw him under the bus because, like, they found out and they were like, he's dead to us. We don't want this guy around us. It was actually funny. To, it was really funny to watch because, like, when we when we need to, like, get rid of someone, it just happens. Wow. Yeah, no, that uh, that doesn't happen here. <laughs> the sta- and, uh, the states- I don't know if you guys have lobbying or not, but we, oh, yeah, we kind do. of do. It's kind of sort of, like you can lobby, but like the thing is, is like it only holds so much power because like all of our, all, our, our prime minister, is, like the president, or, well, the president downstates is voted by everyone. The prime minister is based on party majority. Well, if mm-hmm. you're a party that lobbies like towards like right wing things and stuff like that, there's no point in you lobbying for during like when the liberals are in power or when the NDP are in power and stuff like that. And lobbying is kind yeah. of like is is kind of okay, but at the same time, not okay. It's more like, well, what are you lobbying for? Well, this, this, this. Okay, there's the door. Or, well, okay, change these proposals and we'll see what we can do. It's actually, like, surprisingly, like, like lobbying still exists. It's just not, like, cutthroat like the states is. It's not broken. Yeah. There, again, Canada has a lot of checks and balances. Same with, the, uh, like, it, cause then again, we're also based off the parliamentary systems of... England and France, so which is weird. Mm, a little bit, but we've been talking about we've yeah, been talking about politics w- way too much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but we could also talk about Legend of Zelda. Which Legend of Zelda? What happened with Legend of Zelda? Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is still a good game. Oh yeah, that's right. You've been po- <laughs> you've been slowly playing through that. I've never Nips. thought. Go ahead. Good. Okay. I never. It's your turn. It's your turn to talk. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. by the way, this this the, this is the only person from New Jersey who's like, no, 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 go ahead, talk, talk, go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead. You can talk. <laughs> I'm from South Jersey too, which is even supposed to be the ruder part. Um, Legend of Zelda is a really good game to play on the bus. That's what I've been learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've just been playing it on the like it's really interesting because i'll like play it on the bus i'll be like oh yeah so i'm doing good on the bus and, da, 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 da. and then i'll come across a shrine do a shrine and then go home and like not touch it for like a day yeah i i, I again i don't have a switch so i can't comment on this but i do kind of actually want to sit down and um like watch a playthrough of it because it looks I just mean, fucking fun like i just wish that there were more companies that did Switch things. I wish, I wish Sony made a switch. I don't. 
I wish Xbox made it. Whoa, wait, no, Xbox doesn't have a Switch. <laughs> uh, if, if Xbox makes a Switch equivalent, the PC dies. I hate to say it. I mean, I'm not the wrong. PC, I mean, but the PC, here's the thing about the PC is the PC is their Switch. I mean, the PC does have a Switch. It's the uh, the NVIDIA, like, t- uh, tablet thing that they have. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Okay. That's great. I like that. I'm just, uh, no, I'm not mad. I'm, just I'm not mad. I love it. It exists. Yeah. But I was going to say about the – there's there's two things about you playing Legends of on the bus. Uh, one, I applaud your bravery because if I had a Switch and I pulled it out in public, I would not keep it for more than 15 seconds. Oh, dude. The, <laughs> oh, dude. That's right. This is the cultural difference of Canada and fucking the States. Can, okay. Let me put it this way. I can go home with my lap – my – Fourteen hundred or no, two thousand three hundred, uh, twenty three hundred dollar laptop on my lap with me doing stuff on it without the risk of me being mugged on my bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not, not in the states. states. Not in the states. You can't even I, oh, hold you know on to an iPod without having the potential of somebody trying to take that shit from you. I and I can't imagine having a switch. And man, you need to move. Even man, you need, you need to move to, to Canada and just do that and just be like, "Why am I not living here?" <laughs> and then <laughs> what's going to happen is Ben Ben's just going to give up and he's going to go decide to go to Canada for school. Which, if you did that, I would applaud you. Like I would be like, "Yay!" <laughs> and I would then, say it. For uh, the difference between America and the states is uh, America and the states. states. You mean you mean can't? Sorry, yeah, there we go. <laughs> sorry, I'm slurring. I'm falling asleep. But anyway, I gotta speak a little. Uh, for uh, there was a time when I was going to Nate and I was on the bus. My backpack was kind of half open, like one quarter of it was open, and you can easily look in and like just put your hand and pull something out, like a laptop Entire, or your game or your Game Boy DS or, or a, a fuck, what or my DS or whatever. Bag? I remember Magic that bag. Gathering cards. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. The three hundred dollars yeah. of Magic Gathering cards. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So like, I, I, but the funny thing was because it was so open and like it was a crowded bus because it was Nate and shit like that. It's a college. Like, of course, there's tons of people in this bus. My shit could have got easily took out of that bag. Nothing was taken the entire trip. It was open, and I finally, when I got off the bus, and I was like, oh, I want to look at my DS. Oh, my bag's open, and nothing's missing. Huh. Okay, great, cool. cool. And zip the back up and went on my way. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, when I <laughs> used to go into Philly, I used to take the train. Uh, there's only one place my bag went, and it was not on my back. It was on your left. I sat on the seat, and it went in between my legs on the floor. Yep. And I clamped my legs around it. Because people will just, like, snatch that shit from underneath behind you. They'll take it right – they'll try to rip it right off your back. There's – it's I can't even um, like if I always like double check to make sure my bag was shut. I even considered buying a lock for my bag so, because I just I didn't want to lose, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars with a magic card. OK, so, Ben, I'm going to throw this little bit of a concept at you and you're going to hate Canada for this, but you're also going to want to move here. When I was in high school, I took the bus and my one day uh-huh. I had a really bad day. I got off the bus. I walked home. I pulled out my mu- sheet music because I was a band nerd back in high school. And I went to grab my trumpet, the $500 costing trumpet from school. And then I realized I left it on the bus. I get a text. Fr- uh, I get a text uh, the next day. Uh, like I sent a text to my teacher saying like, shit, I lost the trumpet. I will try and replace it immediately if I have to. That's my response. It's my fault. Da, 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 da. I get on the bus the next morning, and I'm texting my buddy who's like, "Shit, I'm sorry about your using your uh, your trumpet." And I look up, and there's this kid sitting like he again. He goes, he does like he clearly doesn't go to my school. He's like, I think go went to another school across the street from me. And he and he like looks up, and he waves at me, and I'm like, I don't know this fucker. What, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of had that moment of like. Who is this kid? What the fuck am I doing? Why am I approaching this kid? And I look at his lap, and there's my fucking trumpet. And he's like, you left this on the bus yesterday. I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like in, in, in my times, that the, the, if that trumpet made it to the end of the bus line, uh, the bus driver would, have kept it. would either A, kept it, or B, threw it yep. out. 
And you never would have saw it yeah. again, especially if it's public transport. If it was school transport, uh, they probably would have returned to the school because all our school stuff have, has like labels and stuff. Yeah. So they would have known that it belonged to the school and they just would have sent it back to the school. But if it was public transport, you would have never seen it again. Oh, yeah. No, I can believe that entirely. Nobody cares here. Nobody gives a shit about anything that isn't there. Everybody is nihilistic. I just feel so happy that I lost my Fitbit this week. It actually fell off my wrist. Like, I mean, I'm so like happy I live from, again. I mean, like being crushed and yeah. destroyed, like something like yeah, that. Yeah, because you might actually see it again. Yeah, I saw it again. It's on my wrist no, right one, now. One of my favorite things was <laughs> the fact that, like, like no, there, there are people, like, if you lose something America, like a shirt or clothes, that would have been on, picked like, up, like, wiped, sold, and stuff like that, or like, kept downtown immediately. Yeah, you're never seeing those yeah. clothes again. But if you lose, like, something yeah. like. Well, I like, mean, I'm, that well, is a phone. If you lose your phone, technically, because somebody would have picked it up off the street, like, oh, look, free shit. Like, if you find it. Fuck you! You deserve the win. Keep oh, the yeah. win. That could happen too. Um, but like, I lost a shirt uh, two weeks ago, and I like, I was like, ah, well, shit. It's a fa- one of my favorite shirts. I'll just go online and order another one and stuff like that. And I'm yesterday after I get this new shirt in, I'm walking yeah. around. I look down the road, and there's this kid wearing my fucking shirt, and I'm like. I could go over there and beat that kid up and take my shirt back, and then I, and then I'd have two of them. And then the other thought crossed my mind of, wait, the police are a thing, shit. <laughs> and that's the, di- I think that's the big difference between Canada and the United States is, shit, the police are a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the police are a thing in in America too. Uh, if anything, they're more dangerous than your police too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I w- I would say that you guys are more culturally aggressive. I would say I wouldn't say more violent. I'd say more like a pro- prone to aggression because you got. I wouldn't say violent because like Canada Canada technically has uh, gun crime gun rights where you can hand have guns, but we have a lot of checks yes, and balances behind our gun and rights. And we're also like uh, a culturally lot more violent. The, the, dif- the difference between. The, the difference between United States and Canada, I hope, is because uh, is Canada is like... That's the, also true. Well, basically, we're like the Amer- uh, America's younger brother, who's like kinder, gentler human being. America's like the rough and tumble Australia guy. Australia is, like, is like that weird fucking like... Just, like the kid who brings home a snake to its mom and goes, can I keep it? And England was like... Oh fuck! What the fuck? And then it couldn't get rid of it. New Zealand's the kid who came with in Australia. I, if I if we just go down all the fucking like the kids that fucking England had, India's the fucking weird one. That's the adopted kid that England got. What else? But the thing is, but uh, like I could I could go on for hours about like the fucking Commonwealth. But the thing is, is like again, it's it's the cultural differences between the states and stuff like that. And I'm I'm actually yeah. gonna jump on the gun thing really quickly. It's like Canada actually you can't like Canada does have militia laws where it's like you can bear guns, you can ca- have weapons at home. But a lot of people don't need it because we're like we we trust the military mm. because and the government because we're like but... we're we're our militia is more like. Well, yeah. the Royal Mounted Police are military police, yeah. and but they are also federal police, which is weird. But they're nothing I don't get about the states. It's like, how are your state troopers like such assholes? I don't mean to, to diss your state troopers because I, I, I suspect they put up with a lot of bullshit. Yeah, I can believe that. But yeah, no, that I just yeah. it, it, it's yeah. cultural differences and all that fun jazz, and that's the reason why Canada and the United States get along so well. Like, act surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think it depends on the state. Yeah. Um, I actually, I man, I haven't seen a state trooper in forever. I only see township police anymore. Um, state troopers mostly only ever do highway patrol. 
So. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. But I, uh, police for us is just, it's a strange basket. Yep. It's, it's, and that's, called, and that's, and that's, and, and that, the world that's the if up, they have please. body cam footage. Because I know some states don't yeah, have it. Yeah, there's yet. sometimes where, like, you see, you, when you see, like, some of the, the news articles and stuff. Really? Um, expe- oh. uh, I, I, I have to say, whenever you see anything, like, police like negativity coming from us you have to take it with so much salt you might as well just have the whole like salt shaker on your table Mm -hmm. because the way our the way internal investigations go for our police the body cam footage doesn't get released until after internal affairs is done with it and then they release it to the public It's actually by district because I've actually just there was actually a scam. Oh my god, this is the most depressing thing ever. They came to this one place, I forget where it was. Um, but they came to this place to test out body cams and they sold and they rented they rented them by the body cams at like maybe like ten bucks a unit for like a month for a year. To test the durability of the units and stuff. So they equipped the entire police force for this district with Body cams, all the equipment to charge them, and to record the information stuff. Like they had to, like they had to build a new room for the recording equipment, right? And then after the year was up, they said, "Okay, here's the actual price," and it was like three times as much per cam. And then they said, we also are going to charge you for cloud storage for your digital files for the body cam footage. Yeah, no. As well. And it went so far over their budget that they had to, they're like, we can't take the cams then. So they had to relinquish all the cams, all the equipment, and everything, and then they don't have to have yeah. anybody no, cams I at all. That. Surprise! Everything's about a profit. And it's just like, yeah, no. Wow. Just wow. I I, I actually, the thing that I, I got a bit of a giggle out was the fact that I'm in support of body cams. I really am. Uh, it's a great place. I, like they, they, they don't, they don't just protect the public. They protect the police way more than they protect the public, because the police get a lot of shit thrown oh, yeah, at them for sure for fucking bullshit reasons. Like a good example being like what happened with James Brown or whatever his fucking name was, that kid that got shot at uh, yeah, Michael Brown. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason why. I'm like, which one? Uh, mm-hmm. Michael Brown. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. But you also have to uh, – they, they, there's a video I saw. Uh, one of the news agencies here, they went to one of the, the, the academy. They have a VR training sim for some of these academies where it shows an active shooter situation where it goes from a standard traffic shop to an active shooter situation. All of the civilians failed. Instantly, because of how fast it can change. It's the reason why the police, you know, like, even up here in Canada, like the police up here in Canada, like, I got I got traffic stopped once because I had a plate cover on my car because it was during winter and I didn't want my car my plate to get too badly damaged and it was a low hanging plate. The police stopped me at the end of this at the end of the school year because I had a car when I was in high school, and like, me this being my very first traffic stop, I popped the door, put my hands out. And stepped out, and this woman cop is walking up to me, and immediately her hands on her taser. I, and I'm like, I'm like, I just want to step out to talk because, like, I don't want to be like stuck in my car in case something happens. And she's like, okay, that's fine. And we had a discussion. She said, well, we gotta take the plate off. And I'm like, uh, the the cover off. I'm like, okay, do we have screw, do you guys have screwdrivers or cards? Like, no. It's like, well, I can drive home and you can follow me there, and I can take it off there. And they're like, well, we could just rip it off right now. And I'm like. I mean, if you damage my plate falls off and I get a ticket because my plate's not on my car and they're like, like, but the thing is, is like, I can totally get that because like, I was like, I'm a military kid and like, I'm listening to my dad talk about his stories and stuff like that with like doing military operations and how fast those things change. And he's like, yeah, no, my, the buddy, the, one of his buddies who is a cop down in Saskatchewan, he's like, yeah, no, like the mad props to them because they have 
they have such worse situations because it goes from like fucking zero to 90 in like a second for them nowadays. The fact that she only had her hand on your taser for you guys is oh, yeah. pretty astounding because it, the reason <laughs> the reason why for us, this actually is something you need to hear because you're going to laugh at it and you're like, that's a good reason. is because the amount of paperwork for even – Popping your holster, not even taking the gun out of the holster, for releasing the the releasing the guard on your holster is about a hundred pages, and that's the reason why Jeez. like a lot of police like well, if the situation calls for it, fuck it, I'll do the paperwork. I don't care. It's life or death situation at this point. But the like even like popping like the holster open and stuff like that. If a civilian reports that and you haven't done the paperwork, uh, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah. Damn. But yeah, if, if you open the door and like you stick your hands out in America, they're yeah. shouting you down, gun drawn. They're like, no, you do not get out of the car in America. I've heard stories of Canadians that come here to America and they do that here and they get arrested because yeah. you don't yeah. do that here. You don't get out of the car. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's again, it's, it's just, again, huge cultural differences. But again, they work because like we keep right. each other on the toe. Like Americans come up here and they're like, this place is so nice. And we go to Canada goes down to the States and we're like, wow, we actually feel <laughs> surprisingly secure down here. Like that, that's that, that's the thing I've heard like most about most of my friends going down to the States is I haven't heard like problems like, oh, the police were like this. All the people were like this. It's like, no, no, like it's, like it's actually a really nice place. Yeah, most of the most of the general areas are just it's calm yeah. it's just you'll see police more often than not yeah and they're usually not being dicks i actually got pulled over when i was back when i was working because uh, uh i accidentally uh cut through a parking lot because there's a light by my house that's absolutely atrocious to make a left on <laughs> and i hadn't known that that was illegal at the time and uh when i got pulled over for it the guy was like yeah, don't do that. And it's like, all right, bye. And that was it. All right, boss, bye. No, my my the thing is, is like technically doing that up here in Cat is legal. The police aren't going to stop you unless it's like they're literally right behind you. Then they'll go after you and stop you. But if it's like, oh well, it's they'll look if they're across the street going away from the direction you're going, they're not going to stop you. They're going to look at you sternly and say, next time, motherfucker. <laughs> And then they'll drive the other way and leave you alone. Another thing is the police, like, the police won't, like, fucking up here in Canada are actually surprisingly chill. Like, they're still, like, stern and tough and hard on people, but, like, they're, like, they're fucking teddy bears in comparison to your guys'. And I love the fact that, like, uh, whenever I get to talk with, like, my American friends and stuff like that and I bring up, like, oh, this happened. They're like, oh, well, if that was down here, that person, you, that person would be dead. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we need, we need to yeah. get off like cultural differences and stuff like that. All right, because we we were talking about Zelda, we ended up back on like cultural 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 things. Cultural Josh. Differences. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Huh? Sure. Josh, how is MT? Josh lives. Yeah, Josh lives. <sighs> hey, um, so so what's this about a uh, MTG arena? Well, I. <laughs> oh, that was a br- that was a suck. <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh, is this that free to play uh, match the gathering game that? was like oh i don't remember yeah, it was in beta well, maybe like the last funny year thing is it's not like open beta now that's how i was able to get in remotely and oh robot <laughs> so i'm oh uh he said oh. okay to me okay uh oh hi oh no it wasn't you it was it's it's it might be about my connection ah. give me a minute oh just keep going anyway so oh. i was uh i dropped Basically, the reason why I just started to download Arena is because it was a in open beta now, and I was like, okay. And then B, I was given uh, well, it was at my pre-release uh, when you open up your box of pre-release cards, they give you a token that had a code on the back to play. Hey, play pre-release online as well. 
And so I bought a bunch of uh, pre-release kits and I was like, oh, you know what? I'll play this, whatever. I'll get free pre-release you know, cards or whatever from the online version of the game. So, I, you know, like a, a day or so, pa- like a week pass, and I'm like, oh, I still have these fucking cards. You know, let's try it. So I put in the codes and I download or download the game, put in the codes. And I was like, oh, the presentation and all the like the game looks super nice. Like if I was going to say, like, you know, kind of maybe it looks like Blizzard kind of did like, you know, Blizzard polish type of thing. They polished it to the point of like there's absolutely nothing wrong with it to the point. Uh, Like, do you, you know, you it's all nice. It looks really good and everything. Uh, but the only thing, that, <laughs> the only thing that sucks is that because it's free to play, they kind of force feed you tutorials. You can skip, you can skip out of these tutorials. You kind of have to jump through a menu or two, but you can skip out of them. So I was like, I know how to play this fucking thing because I've been playing it for fucking like how many years? Jesus, at least ten. <laughs> at least ten. Uh, so I'm like, oh, <laughs> fucking skip all this bullshit. And before I could play a pre-release game, I had to do some, like, I had to think I had to hit a milestone. I forget what the hell the milestone was. (laughs) Yeah, that's another thing. Mile, milestone. Yeah. So it was like, I think it was like, hey, just play three games under your belt or something. And I was like, for fuck, uh, fine. And luckily the game does give you a default, like, here's five or six packs to, you know, you can choose from. They're all the basic colors and whatever. So... Playing the game, it's fine. Like it works perfectly well. It's Magic the Gathering, and there's a lot of little features in the game that makes the game actually go kind of quick to like the what it, what it is in real life. Uh, that's what I kind of hated about um, uh, playing. Oh, what was the other one? It just took for freaking too long. Oh, I Magic the Gathering, the game. I know which game you're talking about. But we don't talk about the game. It's literally just called Magic the Gathering. Oh, the one that was on the Xbox and stuff? Oh, jeez. What was that one called? Four, I think it's Magic 2014. Yeah. Or, or no, it's like Magic the Gathering 2018 or 17, 16 or something. Yeah. Is it really? So with that one, it, I I was liking that game because it was like, oh, you just buy the bundles and you can slap them on and it'll, it'll work perfectly well. The only thing that sucked with that is uh, the, the how fast the game was uh, progressing, because in, in real life, uh, you know, you have your steps in between your steps. So you have to give permission to the other player. I'm playing this card. He says, yes, I can play the card unless he's going to do something else on top of it. And with the Xbox version or the Steam version or the 2014 version is like every step had a pause and you're just hammering away on the fucking button. Just going like fucking skip this shit. I don't have any mana. Skip this fucking shit. Come on. <laughs> it was like, geez. What, uh, what really got me about this one though is, um, because there was an online turn timer. Yeah. Um, yeah. you can literally timer scum people just by playing a lot of cards. That too. It had a lot of effects. So yeah, that was not that was not great. That's yeah. Well, it's the funny. <laughs> I was a bit of an asshole because I just have YouTube on my right, and I was playing some Magic Gathering on my left, and <laughs> I was playing a couple of games because I was like, I'll hit one of these weekly milestones or something, see if I can get some pack of cards. And as I was playing through these games, I was waiting for the opponent to think about his moves and not realize it was my turn. And <laughs> look off to my right and look some YouTube video and look back. Oh fuck, it's my turn. Shit! <laughs> uh, this play that creature, uh, do that thing, and done. <laughs> uh, but uh, like the only like another like I guess the only gripe I have about this entire thing is that because it's a free to play situation, it's treated like a free to play situation. So it's like grind your life away in order to get any card that you want. And I'm like, can I not do that? That's why I stopped playing Hearthstone because, like, they started removing cards from from standard. And it was just like, well, I will never be able to grind enough to ever have meta cards, so I'm done. Well, that's another Sorry, thing quit. too. It's like that's why I never got into Hearthstone that hard because you can't buy your cards from the get go. And it's like if I could just simply just pick and choose the cards I want, I would be have a better time with this game and maybe even last even longer with it. And even dump more money in the game, probably. But it's like, no, they have to, like, pinch and penny from the get-go. It's like, for fuck's sake. 
Like, just treat it like real life, and you'd be like, whoa, holy shit, we have so many people and money we don't know what to do with. Like, God. <sighs> Every time there's an online game, they always squeeze the fuck out of it and just get your money, and it's like... I'm just not going to spend my time here. I'm going to go play a fucking MMO, which I treated way better. Not not Blizzard MMOs, though. Better be careful. Their community managers might call you garbage on Twitter. <laughs> Wait. I don't even want to get into it that. Happened. Yes, it happened. Two of them. The, the, the World of Warcraft one and the Diablo one. Ooh. Oh, boy. Well... <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say like oh I'll play a better MMO I'll go fucking play um, Warframe. Yep. Like, oh fuck. It's freaking way better. Yeah, that happened. Ugh. Did you hear D bought Paragon? Mm. What happened? What what? Yeah. Digital Extremes bought Paragon. Oh no. Paragon's the developer. They also bought something else. So they own three other. Uh, like rights to titles, so they own Paragon. I know they bought something else, and they're working on another game. Oh no! So, um, I think the only thing they're planning to do with so, Paragon probably is like a slight rework and polish. Which I mean, if they give it the DE polish, man, I'll take that any day of the week. Oh my word! That sounds like way too much I think the workload only, for the only, the only thing Paragon needs right now is uh, balancing and polish, and then that game will be like pretty good. If they can just like put that off to the side and just like here, we'll put out some skins now, every now and then. Just that's that's fair. Yeah, that's I guess that's that fair. Implode. And then I forget what the, the other game they bought. I know that they said they're working on another one, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, At least you're not Telltale. Uh, I, I, the thing is, is I, oh, oh. <laughs> Telltale hurts me because they made Borderlands, the Telltale game, and Batman, and and Dead, and all, all these the games were garbage. The Bat, the Batman ones were fun. It's, I love the uh, Batman. But the thing ones is, is so the much. game that I liked, which was. Fuck, I'm gonna have to find it in a bit, but um, Tales from the Borderlands. There we go. That's the Telltale game. Is again, like as somebody pointed out on Twitter, is this it? They they were visual uh, visual novel uh, graphic novels or visual novels that had some gameplay elements to it, but they weren't like worth all the money for, the, for what they got out of it. And I have to kind of agree with it because as much as I like the Batman tell uh, the Telltale series and the second one that came out. I don't know which I can't remember what the name is is for Enemy Within. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but Enemy the Within. thing for me is is like I I got to like I think number th uh, yeah I got through episode three and I have to play through like episode four and five still and I just like kind of like just sat down and like well I mean this is a clever twist on like Batman and like how his family was but like I'm sitting there playing it and I was like. Wow, they're they're really out to make uh, Batman's parents out to be like assholes. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be like the big twist. Oh, no, your parents are actually, you know, whatever. It's not to spoilers. Yeah, and then, uh, but you didn't uh, even I'm get not, to I'm, like. I'll the have to play it when twist. I get it done with work. But like that's the thing is like weren't they the mobsters or anything like that? They, like that was the accusation during like the course of like the first three chapters is like oh yeah there were mobsters and Dwayne's dad uh, Bruce Wayne's dad was performing like illegal experiments on pe uh, the penguin's parents to like get her to like give up her assets and stuff like that and I'm like um. It really falls off. Oh man! The, like I just within. I couldn't stand the concept because I was just like that. That doesn't. But this is Martha and Bruce and uh, and like whatever his dad's name was. I can't even remember anymore. But I'm um, like like these are supposed to be like Tom. Yeah, Thomas Wayne. These are supposed to be like the Paragon parents. These are supposed to be like the parents you want to have because they're loving, caring. They're there for their son up until they die. And then, like, like this story for me is like, it's not that I don't like the reimagining of like what this, their parents were. It was fun and it was interesting to like read about. But I was just like, mm. 
<laughs> Did you play the second game yet? Or are you still in the first one? I haven't. I'm still on the first one. I, again, I got to ep- the end of episode three of of the five for uh, episode for game one. Okay, that's the reason why it's like I fell off because it was just like I I can't. Um, I think if I remember correctly, it moves away from that fairly quickly in the last in the last chapter, I believe. And in the next game, you can tell that people weren't really like too thrilled with that because there's only maybe like a few passing mentions of like. You know, uh, Alfred being, you know, like, oh, you should be better than your parents or like you're better than your parents or that kind of thing. And then like that's it. And it's completely different. Good. And yeah, I I can believe that a lot of people were not happy with that, considering like even when I was playing, it was like, really? We're going to go with we're going to go with this. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to I will I promise no spoilers, but you know how Telltale always does the it's your choice story and it feels like no matter yeah. how much choice you make there really isn't any kind of like meaningful impact to the story especially in a walking dead again and i counter that with the fact that um again these are just basically visual visual novels they're not actually like anything super spectacular that's where at the end of the second one it's actually Part five is part five A and part five B. Oh, interesting. The ending is they, it still converges back to make part six because it has to. Basically, well, there isn't a chapter six, but it would basically be like game three. Basically, it comes back together at the end to make game three, if there would be a game three. But the deviation is so different. That it actually is like, wow, like the choices I made actually gave me a completely different writing and different events than the other ending gave me. (laughs) And it's like, and I was, I was, as soon as that happened, I was like, huh? And then like, you know, at the end when it shows all your choices, it's like, did you get this path or did you get this path? And it was like, you know, it was divvied up and it was like, wow. All right. (laughs) Yeah, there was actually two completely different endings that actually had two completely different endings. actually did work on this one, it seemed like. Mm. The only thing I remember of Telltale, mm-hmm. of anything, was I was playing the yeah, Salmon Max cool. um, point clicks they made. And they were entertaining. The, I think the only gripe is that it's Sam and Max. You kind of want a full-fledged... You want a full game full of cheesy jokes and shit. And then maybe you play another game or two, but then the drop off is going to be huge because it's Sam and Max. You can only go you can only go so far with it. Yeah. This is a freaking like comedy movie constantly all the time. So it's like, I'm not sure how far they can go with this. I think they stopped at like three or four. Hopefully <laughs> I didn't go that far. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of like mini episodes, I guess. It were, I think there was like. Um, they were like one-offs where they were like really small. I got to see how many there were. Cause I remember there was some games that were like actually like pretty small. I, I can believe that entirely. Yeah. The salmon. Although the one thing I'm, I am going to miss by, uh, with the, um, uh, telltale games is the True. night There's at the inventory. T- Okay, one, two, three, four. It's there's three. <laughs> there's four of them. And then it counts both the Poker Night games. Oh, uh, the Poker Night games are dumb. They're fine. They're fun, but they're dumb. I liked it. Yeah, I liked them. I liked them for like a weird, like, oh, here's a splice in the universe where all these characters could come together. And I'm like, I, I like this dumb shit. I like to think that like just get, come together once a week and be like, oh, how's your week? Ah, oh, it's fucking stupid. Did this dumb shit. Oh, yeah, cool. And let's, let's go play poker. And it's like, OK, I'm down with this. Except just this silly banter between the all these weird one, yeah. characters. It's great. Uh, friggin'. <laughs> yep. And also they got uh, Mr. Doomfist oh. himself, or Mr. Doomfist himself. Uh, they're not Doomfist. Uh, Alan... Boomstick. No, uh, oh, what's his name? from Evil Dead. Uh, what's his uh, face? 
No uh, <sighs> evil. Is it Evil Dead? Yeah. Uh, this is my boomstick guy, Mr. Cheesemo himself. Ashley Ash Williams, yes. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> you know that guy? Yeah. Ash. Yeah, that was two. I think that was the second one. Yeah, because yeah, you got to play against. Like they brought uh, an Ash for one Sam of them instead of Max. You can, and then you got Ash, Claptrap, and Brock Sampson. You can also play against Gladys too. Apparently, uh, I haven't done that, but Gladys is the dealer. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. 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 Wow. Yeah, it's pretty much Gladys. what she does. Uh, like, she just is like, you know, and then like when you do like showdowns, she's like, you guys have done showdowns like four or five hands in a row. Are you guys just recklessly abandoned or is this the only way you know how to play? Uh, Jesus Christ. Gladys, how to be an asshole. Much. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, that's, although now I'm starting to realize, like with the second game, it's like they had so many new characters that they didn't do anything with, because they had Brock Sampson and then they had Ash from Evil Dead, and I was like, "Wait, hold on! You have 3D models and these characters." Oh, surprise! That you're not using games for doesn't know what to do else? with their fucking characters. <laughs> How much did you pay for this? Yeah. The surprise! They fucking overworked their entire staff yep. just so can they have a whole bunch of fucking uh, properties under their belt. It probably oh no, their belt, their was belt the can't hold that this they together. Were looking oh to no, make Adventure explodes. Brothers game and uh, Evil Dead game, but it never happened because they bought the right. They obviously bought the rights for those characters. They might have only got. They might have actually got out of their way to get permissions, not got That's the rights. True. That's <sighs> that. Like that. That might be permissions. But actually getting the voice actors, um, too, like, is like... That That was impressive. When I heard that, I'm like, that's... I don't know if they got actually Ash. I don't know his actual... The actor's name. I think that... I, I, do believe, I do believe they got actual... I do believe they got actual Ash. But at the same time, I'm, like, not all that impressed with how, like... How shit was done with it. Anyways. We talk about... Something else other than magic and how Telltale blew up and <laughs> and and politics. True that. I mean, we. Could, I was hoping that we could laugh at Randy Pitchford for thirty seconds. What happened with Randy Pitchford? I, I'm actually kind of in the dark with this one. Like, uh, he got scammed like out of thirty million dollars. Uh, he gave a friend a job and they scammed him out of how? Uh. How much money? Former three million dollars by former personal assistant. So, in honor of Randy Pitchford. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I feel wow. oddly satisfied. So, uh, on a side note, real quick, uh, it was not Bruce Campbell. It was somebody else. For Ash Williams, it was somebody else who but was not. Bruce. They really? did get Patrick Warburton for Samson, so he actually did the voice. Good for him. So they got one of two. Yeah. Although to be fair, I think does Bruce do anything anymore besides the new Evil Dead? So I can't really knock him for it. There comes a point where it's just you should just stop, you know? I mean, yeah. he did promote a subreddit for pornography for a failing game he was trying to push. <laughs> I did not know that. Holy shit. I did not know that. What? I mean... You didn't know that? Randy Pitchford right now is a person who has done... Whined and complained when Duke Nukem came out and sucked. Whined and complained when Alien Colonial Marines came out and sucked. 
Uh, what else did he whining oh, about? Geez. Oh, social justice every other week. Wait, wait. Well, hold up. I, actually, 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 I, I do have to ask. Uh, is this in the sense of him whining and complaining about so, uh, like, like being like him in support of social justice, or was it just like? Oh, oh yeah. He sat there and wrote a song about how Gamergate sucks. <laughs> Oh. Like, it's like at some point, it's like it's like you know, Randy. I, I, you're you're trying to be a meme. It seems like, and you're failing epically at doing this. Like you're just sad. Oh man, it's just sad, man. I hope Gearbox doesn't have problems, man. I want a new Borderlands it's so bad. I love Borderlands. Like I don't like it's I don't like the guy that runs it. I just like the games. That's all I care about. I hope they keep with that time that that storyline that that um, Telltale's came up with the idea of the vault and stuff like that. I yeah, didn't play that game, so I don't know anything about the vaults with that. You would you uh, you'd love that one. That one actually had like spot on humor, really quick and like witty characters, and like had the best death scene for a character actually i'm just gonna look that up nice because i if you're not gonna play that game oh i probably will at some point i just haven't gotten to it like i want to play the game of thrones one i hear it's pretty bad but i want to try it anyway but uh i mean considering they're you know going bankrupt i'm sure these games will go on sale and drop in price pretty quickly so i'll probably be able to pick it up for cheap soon but uh I can totally believe that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hang on, I'm actually, I, just, I just want you to see this one death scene because I, I assume you've played uh, Dark... Uh, wow, I almost called it Dark Souls. <laughs> um, that is the wrong game. That is the wrong game because Borderlands is actually a pretty easy game mm-hmm. for the most part. Uh, I actually want to find it now. I can't remember his name. He's like the mechanic from Borderlands 2. Oh, um... Scooter? Yeah. It's red. Hang oh, on. Oh man, that's funny. Oh wait, Scooter dies. No. No, like, okay. I, 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 this is a bit of a spoiler, but you need to see it, like how it happens and stuff like that. And it's the opening to like the second, like this, the the the, the chapter four, four or five, because I don't know if it's a, a four part or a five part or a six part, but it's the second last part, and it's just like. Uh, it hurts. It's yeah, episode five. So there's only five parts. So it's in episode four that you get it. And I'm gonna link this directly to you because like it's it's sad. It's it's a sa- it's a it's a death scene that you're like oh oh man. No, I have to watch that. So yeah, you're gonna have to watch that. I was browsing Twitter, and this goes back to an earlier comment. Um. So apparently, Baldur's Great Three is happening. So they are making something new, Beam Dog. Wow, that's 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 shocking. What, like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my God, they're making new. Ba- we, we sat there, we're like complaining, like like yeah, they've done fucking nothing. There's literally fucking jack shit they've done. Done. Literally browsing through Twitter. Huh? Huh? <laughs> we were just complaining about this. I wonder if we'll actually see the delay today, though. The yeah. way things have been delayed le- all over the place. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, since we're getting kind of late in time, I kind of want to breeze over the two things I wanted to talk about, then we can talk about Star Wars, because I know that we're going to rant about that for a while. Okay, actually, can I rant about my one thing about re- uh, uh, Resistance first? Yeah. Because, God. okay, so I watched the cancer of the Resistance trailer number two. Um, where, again, this is set up to like the lead up to episode uh, episode seven. You know, the good of the new, tri- the good one of the new trilogy, okay. which is saying a lot. Um, <laughs> so they use a term called the a- uh, to be an ace, and I'm listening to like as they're talking, like, oh yeah, I want to be an ace one day, and they're like, it's kind of like a race group, and I'm just like kind of like sitting there, and I'm like. You you really don't know what an ace is because Luke Skywalker was an ace. Wedge Antilles was an ace. Poe Dameron in his like 
and, and like the the first scene that you see him flying an X-wing is an ace in just one scene. And that is and what people don't realize about and what I don't think they realize is ace is a term that you give pilots because they've uh, 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 shot down or downed aircraft or v- space vehicles or whatever, the next number of them, and they get termed as an ace. A good example is Baron von uh, Richthofen of the Red Baron, who shot down a confirmed – by the way, this is the confirmed number of a hundred and I think – 12 aircraft, and there's at least another 30 unconfirmed that apparently he has. So, like, 140 aircraft that he apparently shot down over the course of, a four, uh, of like, three years of rapid, rapidly advancing air, uh, aerial combat and w- warfare over in World Jeez. War I. And that's not, inclu- that's not even including, like, German aces from Second World War, where they had, like, matching numbers for the average pilot. Um... But that's the thing is they're using aces in the term of like, oh, yeah, the race pilots and they're like that they're the most dangerous people around. And I'm like, watch this like and like one of the characters like, oh, yeah, I'm an ace pilot. And I'm like, yeah, I, I want to ask the question of how many ships have you shot down is the first thing that's on my mind, because I for Star Wars. For Star Wars, we actually have a we have a firm number of how many kills you have to get to be confer, uh, considered an ace. It's apparently only ten. What? See so if you, yeah, only ten. Wow. And you gotta remember, and you gotta remember, in modern time, to be considered an ace, the kill number is five. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. To be an ace, to be an ace down. To be, to be, oh, sorry. The Commonwealth to be an ace is five. Um, German, the like, and it depends. It's different from like each country. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's six. It depends on where you're from, what you, what they consider like shot down and stuff like that. There's a lot of rules behind being like, ah, yes, I shot down a plane. Okay, were you, uh, were you the only one who shot it down? Were you the only one who hit it? Did you, uh, did you maneuver? Uh, did you see anyone else in the battle zone that could collaborate the kill and stuff like? There's a lot of like conf- uh, confirmation things for like getting kills in aerial combat. But the thing is, is the way they use this term and the way this show looks is it's like, oh, yes, one of the characters becomes a spy working with Poe Dameron. And it's like to help the resistance to deal with the First Order and pirates. And I'm just like, it looks like a mess. It, it really does. Like, I love the look of the ships, actually. Like, like the, the ships in the, in the sh- show look phenomenal. There's a red tie interceptor. And I'm like, that is a dream come true for me. That is like the best thing that you guys did for me today. I love you, but the rest of the show doesn't look at all that good. There's a there's a mechanic character whose face is kind of like a pulled out and has like a f- starfish kind of like shape to it, and I'm like, oh, and all it, all the colors are so goddamn bright. Oh, they look bad. Go back to Clone Wars. Go back to do Rebels. That was two good shows. Ugh. Okay, that's my rant about fucking Resistance over. Let's talk about Mandalore and the new live action show that we've got confirmed. Is a thing. Oh, then we're gonna save that for the end since we're probably gonna rant about that for a while. Uh, actually, I don't have much to rant about it. I've just like again, all we have right now is just the that the thing I linked in there. Oh, okay. Or the thing that. Jeff linked in there earlier, which is that single image. That's the first thing that we have about this TV series. Oh. And I'm not going to lie. It doesn't look bad. They got like, you can tell the prop department is fucking spot on. And the set design looks fucking spot on. But, well, <sighs> if if, if the, with this being a TV series, this actually might work better than like Han Solo, and even like in my opinion, it might work better than Rogue One, which I think was a good movie, and I, a lot of people like it wasn't. But at the same time, it looks like again from all this one image, they've they're putting the budget behind it. They're they're like listening to like they're looking at lore and like following like okay, well, what does Mandalorians look like and stuff like that. And like reading up on like legends and stuff like that. And it looks like, again, it looks like a Mandalorian, a Mandalorian bounty hunter, which I, I'm okay with. 
Yeah, it does. The armor looks good. I'll give it that. Uh, I just, again, I hope that they stick with proper lore. Because they've known. You mean legends? Yes. (laughs) I know that they butcher it, but. uh. Oh, we've got we've got a director. We got episodic directors, too. Uh, Takia Watataki from Thor Ragnarok. Bruce Dallas Howard from Soulmates. Uh, Deborah Chow from Jessica Jones. Rick uh, Femi, uh, Famuyaya. I don't know how to say that, but from the show Dope. And Dave Filoni. Oh, he's directing the first episode. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know, I just watched your Resistance trailer. Or the st- you experienced the cancer? I, it looks like it's trying to be like... Now this is pod racing. No, it's almost like it's trying to be Legend of Korra. That's the feel oh, I'm yeah, getting I from guess. it, and I don't like it. It doesn't feel like Star Wars to me. And like, like you said, it's the racing, and it's like oh, I'm an ace pilot. It's like you race starfighters through rings. I wouldn't mind if it was like, yeah, no, like the first episode was dealing with the idea of like, these are pilots who are racers. And the only reason why they're racing is because like, there's no job for them. So there's like stunt racing and stuff like that. And they're using like, they're like, ba- like they're like, like, again, they're like, let's say they're bounty hunters, like they were ex bounty hunters and stuff like that. And they're just like, yeah, no, like we're making money on the side. since there's no jobs yeah. right now. And if it's that, I would be like, that's actually a clever idea. That's how you get like, well, these are the people who like literally don't care about the galaxy. They're there to make a quick mm-hmm. buck. And then it's like, oh, yeah, Poe Dameron shows up and is looking to recruit a few people. And there we go. We have the characters who go through like the arc of like changing like their opinions on the idea of like fighting for a cause or not fighting for money and stuff like that. Uh, I just. But it doesn't look like that. Yeah, I just watched that trailer and it looks um like shit. It looks pretty cookie cutter for the standard of comedy and cartoons lately. It, lo- it looks like somebody. Yeah. It looks like something that's not aimed at me. So thus, I do not care for it. Unlike the show Goblin Slayer. Oh God, are we gonna talk about this? No. <laughs> Next week, okay. maybe. I saw a post. I saw a post on Twitter about goblins there. There are some things, apparently. <laughs> I have not oh. been keeping up with the season of those shows, so I'm just going to be like, you know what? The only thing I've been watching is Overlord, My Hero, and we'll keep it at that. Oh, oh, so you're con- you, you've you met Tintin. Oh. Tintin? Yes. Uh, me, uh, me, uh, Moira? Mo- Moria? Moria, Optimus the, uh, face, the face, the face guy, the guy who phases through like the ground and the walls and stuff like that. Oh no, I'm only uh, the first part of the the um okay the first elimination. I ha- I forget what. The- oh, you're still working. You're you're, you're doing the the. Te- they're still in the yeah, exam. Yeah, the first elimination of the exam is where I'm at. Hang on, I'm gonna get you the, the the video of his introduction. This is actually like a little bit after the. It's not a super like big spoiler because like we all knew it was coming. Everyone knew who who read the comic was like knew who was coming. But this is what he looks. Oh, I sent the wrong one. God damn it! I clicked copy link and it didn't copy the fucking link. <laughs> hey, when that happens. Uh, uh, there we go. That's his. By the way, that's what his power is. He phases through walls and like per, uh, permeates and stuff like that. And like, just <laughs> click that, and listen to his voice, and you'll understand why I'm like he's fucking tinted. He looks so funny. That's so good. That's 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 brilliant. By the way, this is the first. This this is when we first hear the character talk for the first time. Oh man. And then, and then he prop like when the next in the next episode we get to see him like introduce himself to the class, and he's got that like Tintin gr- like that Tintin smile, and he's like biting his like tongue out through his lips to, and walking like really proud. And somebody posted an image of like what the guys look like reference, and I'll get that too for you before I, before we crash for the night. 
Uh, but like, oh fuck, he's a great character. He's actually like one of my favorite characters in the series because he's just like ten out of fucking ten, dude. Like, he just makes you smile non fucking stop. What? I hope he gets a doggo. Um, <laughs> I hope he gets a doggo. And he calls it Snowy. I'm not allowed to comment on this. <laughs> gets a doggo and gets a doggo and names it Snowy. Sorry, I, I didn't mean my mic there for a minute. My really? uh, my roommate got back and uh, they they watched the Conor McGregor Habib fight, and uh, they're about to get really hyped. Oh. Oh. Gonna get hyped. Oh, I'm, I'm. It's bad. On Twitter, there it's was freaking the aftermath after so the Connor, fight. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. So Connor, fucking like, pe- I don't like, know if it was people for fighting with each other. Beaten. Like, shit. It's like a lot of people stopped Does, them. Uh, Alan want to watch it? We should probably shouldn't say anything. I don't really care. I I don't watch him. Oh, uh, he lost. By the way, by the way, this this is what. Oh, Connor McDavid yeah, lost. He got a uh, submission. Wow, I'm not even upset about that. Nice. Uh, yeah, and uh, but by the way, that's what somebody did to edit uh him as a character, and everybody was like, "No, that's 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 actually surprisingly accurate. We're not even mad yeah, about it this." It really is. <laughs> but uh, what happened at the end of the fight was is um. Uh, Connor's jiu-jitsu coach was like yelling at Habib and Habib jumped over the octagon and attacked them and then the brawl started what? yeah uh, you need to fucking link me this cause like I wanna s- is it? it's in the chat right there this is something that we condone this is what the thing is yeah this is this is Copy probably link. more important than what I want to talk about it's- what did you this want to talk a, about? Is this the actual fight? No, this talk is about after. Like, like... <laughs> talk, talk about it, well, Ben. Is... Talk about it. Talk about this how World fight. 20 fucked over some people. Um, so, basically, do you know the YouTuber <gasps> um, Taking 20? Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> I guess he does D&D stuff. But anyway, he uh, he apparently was a big, big in the corner for Roll Twenty. Like he did things for them, and I promoted them really hard. And uh, him and a bunch of other YouTubers wanted to get together and put on a one shot, I think. And they were going to do it online. And they wanted Roll Twenty to officially sponsor, and they were going to use the platform for the stream. And uh, the lead. The guy that so and if he had connections to get to the CEO of Roll Twenty to hammer out the deal, so him and the one of the other like leading flagship uh, YouTubers got in a Google call with him, and they started. They gave their pitch, and uh, the, the guy, his name is Nolan. He basically he paraphrasing apparently said, um, "No, you're five white guys." And then proceeded to then say, I will never sponsor you. I will never endorse you because you're literally five white dudes doing this. And then he was like, but instead I sponsored this black woman on Twitch. And now she's a partner. And look at me. I'm so great. Instead. So he, he went full S- He went full SCW. He went right off the deep end instantaneously. And then they've been going on a banning spree on their Reddit, apparently, for anybody criticizing him at Holy all. fuck. So all the YouTubers are coming out, being like, yeah, this is exactly what happened. It's exactly what he said. And it's just Roll20 is getting destroyed. But there is sweet karmic justice, if you can even put it that way. Within the day, Wizards of the Coast bought holding shares of Roll20 and fired him. Wait, what? what? 
Yeah, within 24 hours, Wizards of the Coast <laughs> bought Roll20 <laughs> and then fired the guy and then said, we're sorry, we're going to put a lot of work into Roll20 now. Wait, 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 wait. So let me get this straight. I got to draw the flow chart out, okay? So he he, 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 he starts Roll20, right? Yep. Am I, am I right so far, okay. Runs it for a few years. Everyone uses it. A bunch of YouTubers say, hey, we want to promote your service. He Eric, said, screw you, you will... because you're five white says, guys. screw you, because you're five white guys. So if they had, like, if they had, like, another person who was, like, Asian or black, that would have been fine. And probably assuming, a woman. Or a woman. Uh, that would have been okay. But because it was five white dudes, he said no. Mm-hmm. Wizard spies them and then they fire him twenty hours later. Within yeah, within two days or something like that. Did Wizards do something right that we all agree with? I am they, completely surprised about this too, and I, that's I was like, what? Because the guy, the taking twenty, was like pleading to Wizards because like you guys have a straight up deal with these guys. You sell them their content and then they sell it again, and it's like. You guys, like, this is a face of Wizards of the Coast. Like, you're messing up. And Wizards of the Coast was like, you're right. Let's fix that. Okay. Only they Um, did that with magic. Holy shit. Actually, okay, so here's the thing with Wizards of the Coast. Um, (laughs) I don't condone a lot of what they're doing nowadays because they're really SGW-y. Yeah, they they are. Because... They, they're getting like pretty fucking deep down there, but at the same time, they're trying to reel it back because like dumb, like they're like this is losing us money. Holy shit! Um, but the Wizards of the Coast actually turning around and doing this is just like what the fuck happened? What the huh? Holy shit! Did you guys do something right? And then I kind of like stopped and realized like no, but they're still making D and D pretty like fucking SJW in some cases. I just went in there. The sucky, the succubus isn't naked anymore in the books. What the wow. fuck? Wow! I actually went to their their forums on Roll Twenty. They've changed all their moderators for the subreddit for Roll Twenty as well. Really? Mm-hmm. I am incredibly surprised that this happened. Yeah, because I remember there was a big email that went out for all the Roll20 members that were like, that have uh, purchased subscriptions or whatever, saying that, you know, Wizards of the Coast now, like, owns shareholds, probably shareholds for Roll20, and that things are changing. So it's like, wow. <laughs> I can entirely believe that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like out of fucking left field. And at the same time, fuck. Yeah, uh, fuck that guy, though. Honestly, fuck that guy. Yeah, no, he fucking doesn't deserve no. like, having that job there if he's going to act like that. Also, also, just a really quick uh, just a quick thing. Um, the fact that um, the dude, like, again, I'm just going to really quickly talk about uh, the, the UFC fight and dumb fucking shit like that. Um, considering the fact that it was... Uh, Khabib, whatever his name is, Kebab, the fucking whatever his name is. One of his teammates jumped the fence and attacked Conor McDavid from behind. Mm -hmm. Like the dude has no none none of these dudes have honor Uh, because that's because Conor McDavid is getting up to leave to like I'm done with the fight. Like I just want to go home. And the fact that Khabib jumped out of the fence and attacked one of Conor's guys and Conor's guys are just like. Like the fuck's wrong with you? And they just surround him and throw him, like they get and like get him push him over to security. Yeah. Like I'm watching this fucking bullshit happen, and I'm like, you guys are just Khabib should be fucking uh, just not even suspended, but expelled from the fucking league for that shit. Oh, he probably will be. No, he won't. No, nah, he's too big of a money maker. Like Connor is like Connor came back from even from his lawsuit, so. Uh, I do not. He had a lawsuit. Uh, yeah, yeah, one of the one of the female UFC um, fighters that was in the bus is suing Conor McGregor for um, uh, he's civilly for duress and whatever and other things. Pretty much. Uh, there's another male one that's also doing it because, like, he's like, you know, your goons like attacked our bus and broke windows. Like, there was an actual like threat to life from the from your attack. 
And that's what they're that's what they're claiming in the civil uh, suit. So the fact that Conor McGregor is in an active civil suit with two UFC fighters as still fighting in UFC is like the beep's not gonna he's not gonna face anything. He's too important. Yeah. His team and him should should straight up fucking oh, I can man. see like not getting in the next main UFC unless it's an active title defense for sure. But man, I don't know. It's just I don't think he's going to get anything more severe than that than a banning for like not being able to participate for a while. But yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's a it's was a dumb reaction for sure. Well, the world is Yeah. So the only thing I have left to talk about is this brilliance of a gem that I'm sure Alan will appreciate. Oh, no. So, do you know how uh, peer-reviewed papers work? Yes. Yep, oh. yep I do. Is this the... Is this the... Is this the... Oh. Is this the, is this the, is this the academic journals one where these... Uh-huh. Yeah, this is the one. I've already read about this. And, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Was, oh, who knew this, that this ties SJWs into the thing were that, Nazis, eh? <laughs> By the way, I, this ties into the, one of my topics of the fact that I got accepted into university. Huzzah! Uh, by the way, that happened two months ago, and I just found out like yesterday that like I had to go through a uh, the actual university student portal to find out if I had been accepted or not. I was like, that is such a roundabout way to do these things, but Jeez. okay. Um, oh, good for you! But no, I I heard. Uh, thank you. Uh, I also had a shot. Of, I had a drink. A uh, shot of whiskey to celebrate tonight. Hi. But uh, uh, the thing is, is I sat down, I watched, I, I read this, and holy fuck, I love the fact that, like, they even point out that it's what, they've got seven approved. Out of, like, 13 they've got or seven something. Appro- uh, they got, no, no, they got seven approved, seven declined, and I think eight, uh, like, six more be a way, uh, going through the process, I think it is, like... That's what I heard. And I was just like, oh, dude. And the fact that – And like these guys – Most of the ones that were rejected, they said, with the revision, we will pass. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. That's that's terrifying. And like I love the fact that this is coming out. Like, no, this is this is actually how shitty peer reviews are, is right now. Yeah, and it's uh, – well, oh. I, I love the title of the Mike Golf one is literally our struggle is my struggle. And it's simply scattered some up-to-date jargon in the passages lifted from Hitler's Mein Kampf. <laughs> yep. I mean, but like here's the problem with – here's what I'm going to sit there and say that is does this make SJWs into Nazis? No, this makes feminists into Nazis because it was a feminist journal. Basically, they're, they're, they're drawing comparisons. They're like, what you're saying, if contextualized differently, is no better and equal to what Hitler was saying. And, well, you're, the, yep. and you're choosing to ignore it. <laughs> and that's terrible. And then the other ones where they're like, uh, where they human reactions to rape culture and queer perform performativity at dog parks, where they mm-hmm. they inf- they said that dog parks were uh, so, something with toxic mas- masculinity. Of course, I was like promoting a rape culture with men with the dog parks with women. It was like what. <sighs> Some of these papers yeah. are yeah, I, ridiculous. Yeah. Y'all, the ones that got approved are even more ridiculous. You're like, what the? Those fuck, two were dude. approved. Yeah, there was another one about uh, why like men don't use anally penetrating sex toys because it's homophobia or something, and it's like maybe because I don't like things going in an out hole. Yeah. Or it's or it's uh, something I discovered from reading a Reddit post of like, uh, you know, what's your what's the thing you don't understand about other people's sexual orientation is a lot of people are going, other people have options and opinions about that. And it's like, yeah, they do. They have just as much options and opinions as you do. No wonder, you know, not everyone likes it in the butt and not everyone likes it in the front. The so front of their mouth. There's only one side to the of their mouth. mouth. <laughs> so it's like you know, if, 
<laughs> no, there isn't. <laughs> There's another mouth. <laughs> but it's like, come on. Like, of course people have opinions and different views on things. How, like, okay, this this paper you, blows my what, mind. What, the conceptual penis is a social on? construct. <laughs> Anatomical yep. penises may not exist. That's literally the first four words of this fucking thing. And it's, they said it's bogus, but like the fact that this got published, like, blows my mind. I would have, like, I, mean, I would have read that and been like, the fuck is this shit? I mean, but here's the thing is that feminists aren't very smart. So they just jargon. Like, this is coming from my year at Nate when we had lots of feminists in a certain group that I was a part of, but uh, they weren't very smart. Like, you could sit there and lie to them point blank, and they would say, yep, you're probably right. Like, you just have to phrase things properly with them. Oh, geez, that is... That is disturbing. Oh, it's a really stupid ideology that's basically been thrown off a cliff. Like, it, it, like mm-hmm. before, like you could sit there and point to it and say, yeah, like this is a good ideology to believe in because you're believing in equality for everyone. Now it's like, no. Just no. <laughs> there wasn't even really a, about equality for everyone. It was it, after second wave, it just never was a thing anymore. Yeah, you didn't really need it. Uh, I don't I don't care anymore at this yeah. point. Anyways. Uh, I think that's a podcast. Thank you, Ben for joining us for this podcast. Thank you, Alan and Josh, for joining me and Ben. Almost forgot Ben. For joining me for this podcast recording. Hopefully everyone enjoys it. Hopefully uh, people will like the show. Uh, You can like us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on any of your favorite podcasting apps of your choice. You can also watch us on YouTube and comment if you so feel desire to. Uh, you can listen to us every Thursday on the blackbindgames.podbean.com or other sources as well. Thank you, and have a good night. Holy shit, this is... Oh, I thought we were. Well, okay. Well, I no, no, no. See, this is pre banter, and then we go into it. Yeah, this is just stuff that if you feel like putting stuff at the end of the podcast, we can go. Here's some just us shitting around (laughs) and shooting shit. Shitting. Here's here's Uh, just pitching me getting stabbed with a knife. Uh. I just I started mine late. (laughs) That's all. Okay. I didn't say anything important anyway, so mm. what does it matter? It matters to us. I'm actually a little pissed that Roy isn't going to show up for this because I really want to talk with him about the Mandalorian thing. I like Star Wars. Yeah, but me and him are huge Mandalorian fans. Like, like super hard Mandalorian fans. The term, their whores, comes to mind. <laughs> They're like, Daddy, stick it in my ass. And in my mouth. And then back in my butt. Um, I don't know uh, too much about the specifics of Mandalorians. Like, I know I know that there's a difference between the race and, like, uh, then there's some people later uh, that claim to be Mandalorians. I actually have that power. Holy shit. <laughs> Did you move me to AFK? Yeah, I did. I didn't know I had that power. <laughs> it's okay. okay. I have that. But but yeah, no. Um yeah, no, the Mandalorians and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah, we're going to talk about that in Star Wars here today cuz fuck. I don't know how I feel about it. Didn't all of the movies and stuff get canceled? No. Nope. Yes, but this is a TV show. This is a TV uh, show. Um additionally, um <sighs> What's her face? Kathy, what's her fault? Fuck, not Kathy Newman. Um, Is it Kathy Newman? I don't know. Some dumb dumb fucking bitch got her contract renewed. Mm. She's kind of like the reason why everything's going to shit. 
I thought it was Ryan Johnson. No. No, it's that lead woman CEO that's really screwing everything. And you, and you know how bad it could be when it's like, ah, oh, yes. The woman, uh, she, uh, ask me about my feminist agenda is one of the shirts she wore to a fucking Star Wars photo op. Ugh. That just hurts to think about. Uh, it's okay, guys. When the franchise is dead and everyone's prancing all over its grave, um, she'll be the one to blame. I mean, they recently did a huge move and brought back Clone Wars, which I'm like, yes. But at yeah. the same but at the same time, in the same breath, they announced Star Wars Resistance, and I like looked at the images for it, and I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. It this, does look incredibly ugly. It the, almost looks the, like that new uh, Netflix cartoon, uh, The Dragon Prince or whatever. The Dragon Prince actually looks like that aesthetic works for it, though. Because, like, I've seen some clips of the show, and I'm like, it works for it because it's it's cartoony, and it's supposed to be, like, really hard, fa- like, a hard, hard fantasy. Yeah. Like, to the point where it's, like, a ch- child's uh, story with a bit, mm-hmm. like, dark, dark elements to it. This is Star Wars. Clone Wars and Rebels got the aesthetic right because they were still, like, yeah, it's still cartoony. But none of the characters are like these bright, fucking vibrant color. Meet the aces in this new uh, Star Wars new uh, Resistance featurette. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of them looks like an, one of doing. them. One of them looks like a fucking Imperial pilot, and I'm like, if that's the case, then why is he in a, why is he in the same breath as as three aliens and a human and, and a human terrorist? Look at Battlefront too. <laughs> Uh, no, Look how a... well that went for them. Well, that was EA. I mean, I was EA really at fault there? I mean, Disney had to sign off no, on that. No, that was entirely EA's fault. Because you got to mm-hmm. remember, all like Lucas Arts and EA, Disney signed off on it because they when they saw it, when Battlefront the initial Star Wars Battlefront for from EA came out. A lot of people were like, it's missing a campaign and it's got like very bad mechanics, but it's a Solid game. It, it, it present. It does like what it needs to do. Battlefield Two floundered and failed because of the microtransactions and because of the pay-to-win mechanic in it, and the fans hated it. Yeah, I'm just watching a quick trailer real quick. I just want to see what's going on. I'm just I'm just making a desktop here, and then I might do some homework. Because, fuck my life. Two pieces. This is my last resort. It's cool as hell, by the way. Hmm. Database is hard, it turns out. But SQL is pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> only thing I can remember is my early days of trying to learn programming and you know, like going, <laughs> I, I think I get it. And then, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Josh, can you yeah, explain to me a dual one. while loop to me? A what? Do while. I do while? Yeah, it, I mean, most of those type of things are kind of explanatory to a degree just by the name, because it means do this while that. Okay, I got like, I actually have like a really funny antidote about this. Yeah. So yesterday I'm like, like, okay, I'm either doing something completely fucking wrong, and this thing is fucking kicking my ass, and it's fucking annoying. Uh huh. Or I'm stupid. And I'm like doing this, I'm looking into it, I'm like, I don't understand why this is doing doing this and stuff like that. I had the wrong like uh boolean. Period. No, I had a wrong boolean. It was like it was like, um uh you you need a or and not an and. Or one of those two. Uh huh. And I was like I was like I was like I was like once I like looked at it, I'm like, oh, this is why. I'm fucking retarded. 
like that was like the emotion I had of like I am fucking stupid. Like I should fucking grab a crown and fucking put it on my dumb ass head and call my proclaim myself the Lord of fucking idiots. The Lord of fucking idiots, Adet? No. <laughs> just just the Lord of fucking idiots. Like that's how stupid I felt. I was like, I'm fucking dumb. Well, fucking another well, for me <clears throat> not <laughs> for me being uh, not dumb. Oh, I just experienced cancer. Uh Oh, holy yeah, I was gonna say when, when it comes to that kind of stuff, it's just a 56k dial-up sound in my head. Yeah. Oh no, no, no! I, I I watched the resistance, the new resistance trailer came that came out, like Star Wars Resistance, that animated show. I I, I gotta talk about it on the podcast. Like that's a thing I need to like fucking talk about now. Ben, do you want to talk about anything on the podcast? Uh, I mean. The only thing that comes to mind is like the roll twenty bullshit. Okay, but that's about Whoa, it. What? You didn't haven't heard about roll twenty? What happened with roll twenty recently? Oh, okay. I'll I'll say it because it's it's good. Okay, we're you'll gonna, like it. Hold on. You me, you're like, like it. Me, me and you are gonna talk about Star Wars and rant about it for a couple minutes. I'm gonna rant about my fucking oh the cancer that I just experienced related to that fucking trailer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Alrighty, hold on. Jeff is just adding Ben to the talk, it looks like. Ah, shit. I actually need to make a fucking play li game list for tomorrow. Fuck me, goddammit. <laughs> oh, I'm going out to meet with a buddy to play Star Wars Armada tomorrow. Fuck. Could be worse. Okay. Sinking. Three, two, one.